The Canadian Football Hall of Fame announced its class of 2022 featuring Ricky Ray, Chip Kelly, Paul McCallum, Tim Tyndale, Dick Thornton, Dave Ritchie, Keith Evans, and Roy Shivers. Which name stands out the most to you fellas? Well, I think I heard you say Chip Kelly. It's Chip Cox who Ooh. went into those going into the Hall of Fame. You're thinking of the NFL coach, college Golly. coach. Thanks for the correction, buddy. It's all good. I, I know you know who Chip Cox is. I just wanted our listeners to get it. So what stood out most to me here is we've got Ricky Ray and we got Chip Cox going in as first ballot Hall of Famers. I did a deep dive last season on this when the class of 2021 was announced. And I learned there are only 22 first ballot hall of famers currently in the Canadian football hall of fame. And I made a list of players who were not first ballot hall of famers. I'm going to rattle it off. It's going to shock some people. Damon Allen, Mike pinball Clemens, Grover Covington, Matt Dunnigan, like Dan Kempley, Alfred Payton, Willie Pless, Mike Pringle was not a first ballot hall of famer. Chris Walby, Henry Gizmo Williams. Like these are all timers. Willie Pless was not a first ballot hall of famer. So the fact that Ricky Ray and Chip Cox are going in as first ballot hall of famers, number 23 and number 24 respectively is a massive deal. And I think that it really speaks volumes about how incredible they were on the field as pros Obviously, Chip Cox won one most outstanding defensive player award, but he was arguably the best, uh, certainly off ball defensive player in the CFL for, for the better part of a decade. And Ricky Ray, I still can't believe he never won an MOP. He came close a bunch of times, never actually won one. But to me, obviously, uh, arguably the best quarterback of his generation and a player who I feel privileged to have watched throughout his tenure in the Canadian Football League. I may not be sitting here today talking to you guys about CFL football if it wasn't for Ricky Ray, because he was the player who made me fall in love with the game. The way, the way he went about it, how calm, how cool, how collected he was, the way he threw that corner route, it was special. And I loved that as a kid, you know, originally growing up in Edmonton, then moving out here to BC, Ricky Ray was the guy I worshipped. And I can vividly remember the day he was traded, sitting at the the kitchen table for breakfast, just looking at the article in the paper, not being able to (laughs) comprehend how anyone could do this, how the greatest (laughs) player alive could be traded for spare parts. Uh, Well, (laughs) we won't let Eric Tillman uh, defend that decision some other time. Uh, but just a fantastic player and one that's very special to me. And then Chip Cox, you mentioned, I don't think he got enough credit for not only how dominant he was, but his longevity. I have a very good friend who played down at the University of Ohio. Um, Chip Cox is also an alumni of the University of Ohio. And he said, going through college, he was like a myth and a legend in the locker room. They would say to each other, you know, Chip Cox is still playing. It's like 13 years later. He's still playing. This guy had an air about him because of how dominant and how versatile he was on the football field. And he did it throughout his entire career. There was very little decline, even in, in year 11. The names that stand out for me, Tim Tyndale, the former university of Western Ontario, now Western university, athlete went to the NFL played for the Buffalo bills in an area where it was very difficult for Canadians to do so, especially at the skill position. I mean, Chuba Hubbard's got so much hype, but Tyndale was able to do it way back in his time. And it just doesn't really make sense to me how Roy Shivers is now in the Canadian football hall of fame, yet he's not on the riders wall of honor. It doesn't make any sense to me how you can be in the hall of fame first but on in the franchise that you guided for the majority of your career is not willing to honor you. I think that needs to be rectified in Ryder bill. Absolutely. And, and before we go on one, one last thought about chip Cox that I was thinking about yesterday is how much more love would he have league wide? If he played in a place like Saskatchewan or a place like Winnipeg or a place like Edmonton, I like the fact that he played for Montreal his entire career hurt his legacy because as much as there are very obviously some very, you know, fervent Alouettes fans, it's kind of like playing your whole career 
for, for the Buffalo bills, let's say, instead of a team like the New York giants or a team like the Dallas Cowboys, who everybody's always talking about, right? We don't talk about the Buffalo bills unless they're great. And I think the Alouettes is a similar situation in this country. We're always talking about the riders. We're always talking about the bombers. We're always talking about the tie cats. We don't always talk about the Alouettes. And so I think the fact that Chip Cox flew under the radar is a bit of a shame given as to where he played his entire career. 